First of all, Smith's a loser. Okay, so I went ahead and printed the reference image, which is this picture of like a lake with some clouds and the moon and this tree with leaves blowing in the wind. So that's what I'm recreating today. And in the meantime, while I'm painting, we're gonna talk about some moral dilemmas. In 1842, a ship struck an iceberg and more than 30 survivors were crowded into a lifeboat intended to hold seven. As a storm threatened, it became obvious that the lifeboat would have to be lightened if anyone were to survive. The captain reasoned that the right thing to do in this situation was to force some individuals to go over the side and drown. Some people opposed the captain's decision. They claimed that if the captain did nothing and everyone died, no one would be responsible for these deaths. On the other hand, if the captain attempted to save some, he could do that only by killing others, and their deaths would be his responsibility. This would be worse than doing nothing and letting them all die. The captain didn't like this reasoning. Since the only possibility for rescue required great efforts of rowing, the captain decided that the weakest would have to be sacrificed. In this situation, it would be ridiculous, he thought, to decide randomly who should be thrown or overboard. As it turned out, after days of hard rowing, the survivors were rescued, and the captain was tried for his action. If you had been on the jury, how would you have decided? Okay, so overall, I see this captain as quite a selfish guy. Because, well, first of all, he made the decision for all of them that he was certain that they were going to die and that something needed to be done to kick some people off the boat to save the rest of the people. So this was all a very selfish thing to do because the captain wasn't going to die because he wasn't going to decree himself weak. So yeah, okay, maybe if the captain had offered for himself to get off the ship, I would feel a little more sympathetic toward his cause because then it would be a very selfless act and he and some other people would have died for the good of the group. My second problem with this captain and this dilemma in general is that the captain decided that the weakest should die, which to me is a little bit sketchy because how do you determine who is the weakest and that are going to die? It could have been anyone and you could have chosen any characteristic and this dilemma would have been sketchy. Like, the captain could have chosen the dumbest people and how would you determine that? Or like the least survival minded people? Like any of these characteristics the captain could have chosen, I decree him guilty. All right, let's go on to the next dilemma. Roger Smith, who is a good swimmer, is out for a walk. During the course of his walk, he passes by a deserted pier from which a teenage boy who apparently cannot swim has fallen into the water. He is screaming for help. Smith recognizes that he could easily save the boy if he tried without putting himself in any danger but he chooses to ignore the boy's cries. The water is cold, and he doesn't want to catch a cold or get his good clothes wet. Why should I inconvenience myself for this kid, he says. Does Smith have a moral obligation to save the boy? If so, should he have a legal obligation as well? Okay, so this dilemma, I don't like one bit. So here's the thing. First of all, what's his name? Smith. First of all, Smith's a loser. He completely has a moral obligation to help the kid if he has the means to do so safely and without harm to others. It's going to be a net positive gain. The kid will live, like, <laughs> the kid won't die. Nothing that bad will happen to Smith aside from that his clothes will be wet. However, in terms of a legal obligation, I actually don't think that he should have a legal obligation to help this kid because I think that if such a law were to be put in place, like if, you were required as a bystander to help any person in need that you saw. I think there would be a lot of gray area there that could target specific people. And so I don't believe that it would be a good idea to force bystanders to help people, especially in that in a lot of cases, if a bystander were to step in, it would make the whole situation more unsafe. Like if Smith hadn't known how to swim, then I would say there's absolutely no obligation to help the boy because that would put Smith in danger as well as the boy. If you're just going to make things worse, then you shouldn't help. I think that would just give the police another way to target people, you know? Smith absolutely had a moral obligation to help this kid, but I don't think that he should have a legal obligation just because I know that the system would 
mess up the legal obligation completely. So that's the verdict there. A trolley is running out of control down a track. In its path are five people who have been tied to the track by a mad philosopher. Fortunately, you could flip a switch, which will lead the trolley down a different track to safety. Unfortunately, there is a single person tied to that track. Should you flip the switch or do nothing? All right, so the next one is the infamous trolley problem, which I have thought about a lot since I learned about it, and I learned about it quite a while ago now. And I still don't know what I, what I think is best to do. There's two ways of thinking here. There's the utilitarian way, which would be just to pull the switch and save the five people, even though you're killing one person. That's the most positive thing you can do. That's, that's the most people that you can save. So from a purely utilitarian perspective, that's what you would do. And that's what I'd like to think that I would do, but I don't think that I'm really strong enough to actually follow through with that. I think that, in fact, I would just let the lever be killing the five people but saving the one person because the five people were already like on track for death. While I was thinking about it today though I actually came to a new conclusion which was that I always think about this problem as if I'm guilty in one way or another for either pulling the lever or not pulling the lever. However, the person who's really guilty is the mad philosopher who tied them all up in the first place. Which for some reason I have never thought of before in my life. I don't know how I've never thought of that. But the philosopher is the one at fault here. I'm not guilty for a single one of these deaths. I didn't tie them up and I didn't for like, the philosopher forced me into this situation, <laughs> hypothetically. So now my answer is that I wouldn't do anything, but I would try not to feel guilt for their deaths because it wasn't my fault. It wasn't any of our fault. It was the person who tied the people's up fault person who set this entire situation up. So my verdict is that no one but the philosopher is at fault here and that I don't know what I would do but that I wouldn't be at fault either way. <laughs>